Okay. Suratul Fatiha. We came halfway in Suratul Fatiha. Sa'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. We the first half of Surah Fatiha, we actually speaking about Allah. We speaking about Allah. And we are describing Allah. This ikhtilaf, whether the first verse is part of the Surah Fatiha or just the opening of it. So let's just look at the, the descriptions. What do we say about Allah? We said what about Allah? Let's include the first verse. Bismillah Ar Rahman Ar Rahim. So there's Ar Rahman and there's Ar Rahim. Right? What else do we say? Alhamdulillahi and who is Allah? Rabbil Alameen. So, so this is like a separate block, this is like the opening part, right? It's the opening part. And then in the Surah Fatiha we say Alhamdulillah. All praise belongs Lillah to Allah. Lillahi. Lillahi. From a linguistic point of view, the next four words or next four structures are going to be Sifa. Alhamdulillahi. Lillahi, li is harfuja, and the word Allah is harfuja, like ismu majroor. Then there's four sifas that come after that. Give me the four sifas. Rabbi, next one. Rahmani, Rahimi, Maliki. So there's four sifas that come after that. It's going to be Ar Rahman is one sifa, Ar Rahim is second sifa, Mali, no, sorry. Alhamdulillah, I missed one. Rabbi is the first one. Rabbi al Alameen. And then Ar Rahman and Ar Rahim. And then Malik. Malik, Malik. Like this. Malik, you meet him. So we describe Allah with four sifas. And these four sifas we also mention are imbalance. Why are they imbalance? Because it's like really Arabic sometimes, like you just, I don't know, you just like look at stuff and see stuff. Anyway, but. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just like, I, I didn't see it before, but I saw it now. So I can make up my own stuff sometimes, but Bismillah. <laughs> but I'm just like, I what I see. In other words, the word Rabbi is what? Jalali or Jamali? Jalal. Jalal. Jalal, strength, power, might. He's Rabbi, he's the Lord, the master of all of the worlds. It's going to be Jalal. Right? It's going to be Jalal. Jalali. Jalal. How about Ar Rahman Ar Rahim? Jamal. 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 Now, what's the end here? Jalal. So, two things here. The one thing I mentioned last week was what? There's balance. There's Jalal and then there's Jamal. And it ends with Jalal. Maliki Yawmiddin. What I just saw now, it was interesting when Allah describes Himself. It's as if the Jamal is here and the Jalal is here. You see what I mean? Like if you take the verses, there's actually a circular construction here. You with me? Which accords perfectly with with Allah's description of Himself, Kataba ala nafsihi rahma. He inscribed upon himself Rahma. Wa rahmati wasiat kulla shay. And my rahma encompasses everything. Wa rahmati sabakat ghadabi. And my rahma it, it outpaces, it outstrips, it, it, it's greater than my my anger. You with me? So the core of Allah is what? Rahma. Is rahma. There is, there is jala, but the heart, even the heart linguistically in terms of the surah structure is what? Is rahma. It's actually beautiful if you think about if you think about the structure of how things are, things are things are mentioned. Alhamdulillah. So that is the, the beginning of Surah Al Fatiha. Then we move to a new section. That's almost like section one. Now section two is different. Are we mentioned in the first section? There's no na, there's no nahnu, there's no ni, there's no there's no whom, there's no is any mention any other being? Alhamdu. Did we say Nahmaduhu? We praise you Allah. We didn't say that. We said Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. All praise belongs to Allah. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. He is full of Rahman, he is full of 
everlasting uh, everlasting rahmah maliki yawmiddin iyyaka maliki yawmiddin is the master of all of the worlds now we enter into surah fatiha now we enter how do we enter iyyaka na'budu na'budu so we just spend a few minutes on iyyaka na'budu what does iyyaka actually mean Okay, there's two. What, what is you in Arabic? Anta. Anta. Okay. Now I'm going to tell you something weird. Anta, that's actually Rafun. That's Rafun. If you put Anta into Nasbun, you know what it becomes? Iyaka. That is the Nasb of Anta. I didn't tell you last year because too much. Just now. <laughs> but I know Anta. <laughs> okay. So, Iyaka is the Nasb of Anta. So, to make it simple for you to understand, this actually is the equivalent of saying Anta Na'budu. It's the equivalent of you, of we saying Anta, you, Allah, Na'budu. We worship. Okay. Now, this year, Na'budu is what? Ism fi'lu harf. It's a what? It's a fi'l. It's a fi'l, so this is the, the verb. Where is the fa'il for this verb? Inside? What's inside? Ya'budu, he is worshipping. Na'budu? We worship, we are worshipping. Where is the fa'il? Inside. What's inside? There's a na inside. Alright? So in other words, this word means we worship. Right? So we have fi'il, we have fa'il. We in the sentence is the object, the, the dana part. Who are we worshipping? We are worshipping you, Allah. So this is actually the, what is this in the sentence? <coughs> this is fi'il, this is fa'il, what is this? <laughs> That's maf'oolun bihi. So what what is maf'oolun bihi is? <laughs> Nas. I can't use anta. You with me? I can't use this because this is a rough version. I must use the nasbun version. So this is maf'oolun bihi. Mean ba maf'oolun bihi. Does the maf'ool normally come before the verb? It's unusual. It normally comes after the verb. So put the maf'ul after the verb for me. How do you say we worship you? We normally say what? Na bu du ka. We normally say na bu du ka. That will be the verb, the file inside, and the maf'ul coming afterwards. So yes, so what we did is we took this maf'ul and be which normally. So in Arabic, what happens is when, whenever something moves from the normal state to an unusual state, there must be a reason accompanying it. The normal state is to say, Na'buduka, we worship you, because the normal state is to put the, the, the maf'ul at the beginning. It is possible to put it at the, at, at the sorry, the normal state is to put the maf'ul at the end. You with me? So what happened is Allah took the maf'ul away from the, 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 the end and he put it to the beginning. Who wants to venture a thought on why? Okay, good. So generally what happens is that when you move something to the beginning, there's a term for it, it's called taqdim. Like salah. Like salah, you get, you get, you make salah, you join your, what's now, you join your asr to your zuhr and you make your, your asr in your zuhr, that's called jam taqdim. When you bring asr forward, this is also called taqdeem. So you're making taqdeem of what? You're making taqdeem of the maf'ulun bihi. All means that you're bringing the maf'ulun bihi forward, right? You're making taqdeem of the maf'ulun bihi. What? Yeah, I can say maf'ulun bihi muqaddam. Muqaddam at second bar. Muqaddam ayu qaddim. To bring forward muqaddam at just being brought forward. Because qaddam ayu qaddim, the master is called uh, taqdeem. No. The reason you make taqdeem, you ask me some more Arabic words, is for 
تخصيص اوكي العاص هذا بيقول هذا دوري تخصيص ورز تخصيص مين خاص يرز خاص مين كلاس اكسكلوسيفيتي اوكي سو خاص بيسيكلي از لايك ا لايك اكسكلوسيف اكسكلوسيف لايك يو هاف ام از لايك جنرال بيبل اند خاص از لايك اكسكلوسيف بيبل سبيسيفيك بيبل سو ان اذر ووردز يو وي ميد تك وي ميد تقديم اوف ذس واي تو ميك ات اكسكلوسيف يو ويت مي بيكوز نعبدك وي ورشب يو وي كود هاف سيد و And what? And what? And what? You know what I mean? You with me? But now when you move it to the front, it becomes you. We worship. Therefore, if you open the translation, they should put in brackets, not actually without brackets, the word alone. The word alone doesn't appear in the verse. You understand? It doesn't say na'buduka wahdak or something. The word alone doesn't appear in the verse. But why do they put the alone there? Because the Alphita of Zeta understood. That because Allah is making taqdeem of e of the you, that is therefore taqsis for exclusivity. Therefore, it's fine to add alone in brackets. Okay, so the first part of our homework is you can go to Corpus Quran and check there how do the translators translate this verse. Okay, it will be an interesting thing for you to see how they translate the translator the verse. So iyaka you and you alone Allah na'budu we worship. So literally, just means you we worship, but we add the alone because of the, because of the, of the taqdim because we brought it to the, to the front. Okay. Next thing, again to understand a word, you have to understand the whole family. What are the duties of na'budu? Abada. So what other words do you know with abada? An abid. What's an abid? A worshipper. What else do you know? Ibadah is what? Worship. What's an abd? Abd is a a slave. Maabud. Maabud is the one who is when one is worship. Okay. I want to just add two words together so you can just put these two words together in your mind. When we say iya ka na'budu, the the one connotation is the the connotation of the word worship. Worship is a ritual action you do, that you pray, you fast. It's a ritualistic action you do. So here, yeah, what words come to mind? The word ibadah, the word abid, the word ma'bud. With me? Ibadah means worship. Abid is a worshiper. Ma'bud, the one who worships. Those words comes to mind. So then you get other word which is means to be a a slave. And slave, uh, unfortunately, in English it's a loaded term, but let's talk about the Arabic term is is Abdul. Abdul. How is this different from this? Slave is my choice. Is to is a slave an action? So worship is an action. What is this, what is a slave then? Okay, but it's a noun. Okay, but it's a noun. But the other is different. Okay, so worship is voluntary, and the slave is not really voluntary. Good. What else? Slave is a noun you can hold and touch. Are you slave like five times a day? How much you slave? <coughs> When you're like in the in the conventional understanding of slave, you slave and and it's not an event. What is it? It's a It's a permanent state of being. Subservient. You with me? It's a perm. It's subservient. It's a, it's a permanent state of of being. In other words, you're actually owned by the master. It's like a hal you in you in the hal of slavehood. You're owned by the master. He owns your time. He owns your life. He owns your wealth. You are owned by him. What is worship? Worship is actions you do to to please the master, to fulfill things. But what I'm saying is. The difference. What I, what I want to add both is it because if you say you alone do we worship, we don't only mean you alone do we make salah for, or you alone do we make hajj for, or you alone do we fast for. These are all ibadah. Also, you alone do we enslave our 
asal so. Because what happens after you finish the ibadah, are you still abd? Yes. You can't make salah dhuhr, you're making ibadah. You say, assalamu alaikum, assalamu alaikum. What do you say? Yippee, I'm free. <laughs> you're not free, you're still the abd of Allah. You with me? So when you say, na'abudu, yes, you alone do we worship, but you alone, ya Allah, we are abd of, we are owned by you. Our life is owned by you. Our time is owned by you. Our wealth comes from you is owned by you. We are enslaved to you, Allah. And we do acts to actually just display our enslavement. You with me? We put our head on the ground as actually like a symbolic action. Because in the end, it's just like a symbolic action. I'm just putting my head on the ground. It's a symbol to, to actually, a symbol of what? A symbol of my, my state. You with me? So one of the big changes in the Muslim is to move around defining Islam as a set of actions to defining Islam as a state of being. In its entirety. You with me? Part of the journey is to, because we think of Islam as ibadah, those things make me Muslim. We must think of it what? As the state of being an abd makes me a Muslim. That's Islam, the state of being, and the state of being doesn't end. Therefore, your Islam doesn't stop when you go to work. It doesn't stop when you go to your family. It doesn't even stop when you go to the bathroom. You with me? Because you're in a constant state of being to who? Iyaka. You and you alone. You are the only one. There is no one else. no one else and really like we are, we are far from that state we are not close to that state like the state of these two words we are far from that state because he owns us he looks after us he provides for us and we should turn to him in that state not turn against him all the time we should turn to him completely and constantly, all the time. Because iyaka na'abudu, you say it all the time, iyaka na'abudu. And the words are actually easier on the tongue, but they're actually heavy in reality. Enslave yourself to Allah, make your life about Allah. And it's always the iyaka is beautiful because it's saying you and you alone, there's no one else. There's no one else for me. Everything else is incidental, everything else comes and goes. It's only you. There's no one else except you, Allah. It's just you and me, Allah. That's the only permanent relationship. And this is, a, this is what the Abd says what? After they recognize Allah. The beginning of the Fatiha is only about Allah. And once you really recognize Allah, you recognize His Jalal, His power. You recognize His Jamal, His beauty and His love and His kindness and His caring. You recognize He's the master of everything. You recognize He can to take you to account for everything. When you do that, immediately what you say? Iyaka. And the last thing to end up with is a long discussion. But we didn't say, Ye Allah we worship. That would have been consistent. Allah referred to himself as what? Third person. He is the most merciful. He is the master. We didn't say he we worship. What did we say? What did we just do there? We heard about you and now we turn to you. We heard about you Allah. And what happens? Like we heard about you and then we, we turned to you and we spoke to you directly. It's a, it's a very powerful change. This change, inshallah, we'll call it, we'll call it iltifat, but we'll discuss it in the, in the next lesson, inshallah. May Allah give us really the true weight of these words. May Allah make us be true abds and make true ibadah, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.